candles or say lamps are the ancestors of today's bulbs. <sighs> With the introduction of electricity and due to innovative nature of the human mind, we got our first light bulb in 1879. Soon the light bulb got popular and was used widely. But we did not stop there and kept on working on the betterment of the bulb which led us to LED light bulb technology which is more power efficient and bright. We living beings have many differences as compared to technology as it is completely physical in nature. But there is one big similarity between us, that is evolution. Yes, we both evolve with time. Hey guys, my name is Parag and today we are going to look at the latest technology of the MOSFET which is Gallium Nitride MOSFET. So let's start. Before we go into a discussion of the Gallium Nitride, Let's see some background for the MOSFETs. Silicon based MOSFET is a good device and we use it in many regular day to day applications. For example, in amplifiers and low voltage switching, but it is not the best. It has many drawbacks and measurements are significant leakage current, instability and lower breakdown voltage and average switching speed. Today, when the whole world is working on electric vehicles for green transportation, power efficiency becomes an important factor to consider. Transportation is not the only thing. The requirement for MOSFETs is in medical has also increased. So to use MOSFETs in such application, it should withstand higher operating voltages and switch at higher frequencies. And this cannot be achieved by regular silicon based MOSFET. As they say, necessity is the mother of invention. These requirements led us to use compound semiconductors in MOSFETs. And one such compound is silicon carbide. The silicon carbide MOSFET has many features which outplay silicon based MOSFETs, which we have already seen in this video. Although, Silicon carbide MOSFET is not sin free, it has its own drawbacks. There was still scope for improvement and which brings us to gallium nitride MOSFETs. Let's compare the gallium nitride MOSFET with the previous two MOSFETs and see what extra benefits we get in gallium nitride MOSFETs. So oh, I forgot about one part. For this video, I'm referring to this book called MOSFET and Gallium Nitride Fed application book from Nextpedia. It is one stop solution for all power electronics engineers who want to select a perfect MOSFET switch for the circuit. And thank you so much for Nextpedia for providing this hard copy of the book. Well, there are some interesting things also coming from them. Stay tuned. So, we have already discussed in one of our videos what parameters we should check to select a MOSFET. Let's have a competition between these three MOSFETs and find out which is the best. So the rules are simple. We'll give scores according to their performance. Rank 1 will get 10 points, rank 2 will get 5 points and last ranker, well, no points for him. To check that, I looked for some sample data sheets and found three MOSFETs. A silicon based MOSFET from OnSemi, a silicon carbide based MOSFET from Infineon and gallium nitride MOSFET from Nextpedia. To conduct a fair competition, we'll search for a MOSFET whose drain to source voltage should be at least 650 volts and the device package is 20247. And these MOSFETs should be capable to drive 20 amperes of load current. And one more thing, only 20% of our viewers have subscribed to my channel. Creating this video takes a lot of time and genuine effort. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me. It's completely free for you. For any reason, if you're not happy with my videos, you can always unsubscribe later. 
but by subscribing now, you're helping me to grow my channel and create more high quality content. Now let's start evaluating each MOSFET according to its performance in respective parameters. First parameter that we'll consider is the drain capability depending on the temperature. It is the continuous current that the MOSFET can carry when it is turned on. And it depends on the junction temperature. With an increase in junction temperature, the drain current decreases. This is known as the negative temperature coefficient. So we take drain current values on two temperatures, one at 25 degrees Celsius and other at 100 degrees Celsius. For silicon MOSFET at 25, this capacity would be 36 ampere. For silicon carbide, it is 39 amperes. And for gallium nitride MOSFET, it is 47.2 amperes. At 100 degrees Celsius, the silicon MOSFET can carry 22.8 amperes. Silicon carbide MOSFET can carry 24 amperes and gallium nitride can control 33.4 amperes current. With the increase in temperature, the drain current of all three MOSFET decreased. But still, at 100 degrees Celsius, gallium nitride MOSFET has good enough value of drain current. So the point table becomes 0 to silicon based MOSFET, 5 to silicon carbide and 10 to gallium nitride. Just by comparing the drain current is not sufficient. We should check the other drain current parameters such as peak drain current and leakage drain current. Peak drain current is the maximum drain current which can flow through the MOSFET for a very less time. The silicon MOSFET can handle 90 amperes. The silicon carbon MOSFET and gallium nitride can handle 100 amperes and 240 amperes respectively. And that's a huge margin. This means the gallium nitride MOSFET can handle higher values of transient currents than other MOSFETs, which is a very big advantage. Now we have to update the scoreboard. 0 points to silicon based MOSFET, 5 to silicon and 10 to gallium nitride. Even if the gate voltage is 0, the MOSFET allows some small amount of current to flow through it. That current is known as the leakage gate current. The value of the leakage current should be as small as possible. For silicon MOSFET, it is at least 10 microamperes. The silicon carbon MOSFET ranges from 1 to 150 microamperes, and for gallium nitride MOSFET, it ranges from 2.5 to 25 microamperes. The window of the leakage drain current in gallium nitride MOSFET is very small. So the 10 points to silicon, 0 to silicon carbide, and 5 to gallium nitride MOSFET. As we know, the load current requirement is 20 amperes. So you must check how much gate to source voltage is required to turn on each MOSFET. And if you check the transfer characteristics of these MOSFETs, then the silicon MOSFET needs 6.5 volts, silicon carbide needs 9 volts, and gallium nitride MOSFET requires less than 6 volts to drive the 20 amperes load effectively with minimum RDS on. We can say that gallium nitride MOSFET can drive 20 amperes load current with minimum gate voltage. So driving a gallium nitride MOSFET would require a smaller gate driver. Well, there will be 5 points to silicon based, 0 to silicon carbide and 10 points to gallium nitride MOSFET. The gate charge and input capacitance are also important parameters to select a MOSFET. If you take a MOSFET, you'll always have to deal with them. Surprise! So, the input capacitance of the silicon based MOSFET is around 2900 picofarad and its gate charge is 66 nanocoulombs. The input capacitance of the silicon carbide is around 1100 picofarad and its gate charge is 33 nanocoulombs. And finally, the input capacitance of the gallium nitride MOSFET is around 1500 picofarads and its gate charge is 22 nanocoulombs. This input capacitance changes as per the change in the drain to source voltage, but the difference is negligible. Now, if you compare these values, the gallium nitride MOSFET has comparatively low input capacitance 
and K charge. Well, the input capacitance of the gallium nitride MOSFET is higher than the silicon carbide. But comparing these values, we can find out that driving the gate of a gallium nitride MOSFET would be relatively lesser power consuming than silicon and silicon carbide MOSFETs because of its low VGS, input capacitance and gate charge requirements, which will eventually minimize the gate driver power loss. One disclaimer, this gate charge is a dynamic characteristics. So it has to be measured at a particular circuit conditions, which is always mentioned in the data sheet. The input capacitance or any other dynamic characteristics of these MOSFETs are measured at drain to source voltage of 400 volts. Now we'll give combined points to these MOSFETs for input capacitance and gate charge as this. Now, one of the important parameters is the RDS on. It is the resistance between drain and source when the MOSFET is turned on. This parameter plays a very important role in the MOSFET selection. If this resistance is high, then the power loss of the component increases, which decreases the overall efficiency of the circuit. The RDS on of the silicon MOSFET is in the range of 78 to 95 milli ohms. The RDS on of the silicon carbide is in the range of 48 to 54 milli ohms. And the RDS on of the gallium nitride is in between 35 to 41 milli ohms. If we compare the RDS on of these MOSFETs, we can clearly see that the gallium nitride MOSFET has the lowest value. Even though the difference is in few milli ohms, still it makes a huge difference. Let's calculate the conduction loss of these MOSFETs for 20 amperes drain current. For silicon MOSFET, it would be around 31.2 watts. For silicon carbide, it will be around 19.2 watts. And for gallium nitride MOSFET, it would be only 14 watts. Now this difference seems noticeable, right? And point table goes as this. Next important parameter is the reverse recovery time and reverse recovery charge. We have already seen this concept in the last video of the MOSFET switching for inductors. Well, to brush up again, let's say a MOSFET is connected at high side and there is an inductive load. The MOSFET's body diode is carrying a free willing current when it is off because of the flyback voltage induced in the inductor. As we know, the freewheeling diode exhibits some strange behavior when it switches from forward bias to reverse bias and reverse current flows through the diode for a very small amount of time. The amount of time for which this reverse current flows is known as the reverse recovery time of the body diode. This particular area is the reverse recovery charge. This charge and time should be as low as possible if you want to switch a MOSFET faster for an inductive load and minimize the drain current stress on the MOSFET. This reverse recovery time for silicon MOSFET is 106 nanoseconds. For silicon carbide, it is 68 nanoseconds and gallium nitride has only 59 nanoseconds, which is lesser. And this timing difference makes a huge impact on switching frequency of the MOSFET. Well, here also the pointer system updates. Now we all know which MOSFET is the winner. But to maintain game spirit, let's find out the final score. Well, 15 points to silicon based MOSFET, 35 points to silicon carbide, and 70 points to gallium nitride MOSFET. So this MOSFET wins without any doubt. We saw that there are many aspects in which gallium nitride technology is superior than silicon and silicon carbide technology. So as per my understanding, gallium nitride technology is not justified. It is the future of semiconductors and we should welcome it with open arms. Of course, there are still some limitations related to mass production and prices but it is changing, it will take some time. Apart from that, 
gallium nitride MOSFETs have high operating life. It has very high conductivity and has a wide operating range up to 175 degrees Celsius. Well, that is a brief comparison between silicon, silicon carbide and gallium nitride MOSFET technologies. I hope you got something from this. If you have any questions, you can write them down in the comment section. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.